Good morning, Leroy. How are you? What are we working on today? Questions? I have to see my agent. You know, if we're going to be a star, we got to be up to Andy here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me laughing. You won't get out of here before that. <laughs> he ain't never going to get this film done today, is he? Should we introduce this place? Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. My name's Leroy. I'm at Maine Coastal Fisheries in Stonington, Maine. We try to do programs that will benefit the fishermen in this area, which is mainly the mainstay of the community. I'm gonna answer your questions for you today, or try to, so that you may understand what and how the people work here and what they do. Okay, now we're ready for some questions. All right, answer some questions. Hi, Leroy. I really enjoyed your first film, and I'm looking forward to the others. My name is Leslie, and I live in Blue Hill. If you could talk about why is it that some people prefer hard shell and some people prefer soft shell lobsters, and which do you prefer? Thank you. Bye-bye. People have different ideas about the meat. A lot of people like to buy the hard shells because they're full of meat. A lot of people feel that the shedders are full of water. Now the reason for that is when they molt, they cannot eat. So they live on that fat reserve, almost like a grizzly bear. When they, when they hibernate in the wintertime, they live off the fat that they stored in the good times. So when you buy a shedder or soft shell, they have a lot of water in them and they are ravenous to eat because they want to build that fat supply back up so that they can migrate back offshore. I find that the, the shed of meat is, I think, a little sweeter. I may be a little more tender, but a lot of that depends on how you're cooking them. You can overcook a hard shell and the meat will be chewy. If you, uh, we just did a segment on cooking and if you watch that, you can understand the difference between the process. Okay? Thank you for your questions. Hi, Leroy. This, this is LaDawn Swan. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. And my wife is, uh, want me to find out how you do a traditional New England lobster bake. We want to get some lobsters and have some friends over and, and don't really have a good idea on how, how you go about doing that. Thank you. I love to bake. That's traditional. Cooking them in the tub. Okay. You get a big pot. Stainless steel. I prefer stainless steel over galvanized. I also take the bands off the lobster because I'm, I'm uh, kind of convinced they're made with petroleum products. And I don't want that to infiltrate the flavor of my lobster. Keep the water clean. Don't salt it. Don't put any chemicals in it other than the lobster. Put maybe, in, if you're cooking 20 lobsters, put maybe three inches of water in a tub with a cover. And all you need to do for a cover, take a piece of plywood, cut a circle, cover the thing, put a handle on it. Let the steam work inside of the pot. It'll cook quicker. If you're in Alabama, no doubt you'll be purchasing hard shell. So the hard shell, it will be full of meat and the shell will be a little thicker. So probably, or it depends on the size. If, you, if you're cooking pound and a half, two pounds, probably 10 to 12 minutes. And I take the thumb out of the claw. When that comes out with the transparent thing on the end, they're done. And uh, take them off. If you have another big pot or a kettle, submerge them in cold water and that will stop them from cooking. And you don't need to leave them in there a long period of time. Only want them in there long enough so that you can grab them with your bare hand and pick them out and the shell doesn't burn you. And uh, you should have a great time and they should be real tasty. Okay? Thank you for your question. Hi, Leroy. This is Bjorn from Columbus, Ohio. And I was just wondering, what is the coolest thing you've ever caught in a lobster trap? The coolest thing? Cool thing. Every once in a while we catch something that we've never seen before. Some type of sea animal. In the last couple of years, 
We have, the traps have been covered with what we call sea squirts. I don't know what they are, but they have an animal inside of them. And they've showed up here in the last couple of years, whether it's due to climate change or the temperature of the water or something that came off of a, a boat that came from another area, we don't know. But by the end of the season, the traps get pretty heavy, I'll tell you, they're full of water. Scallop dragging, I dragged up a, uh, what's called a dead eye, and that's on a sailing ship. It's about the size of a water pail. It has the holes drilled through it. It's made out of lignum vitae, which is one of the hardest woods I guess known to man and uh, we dragged that up and I made a lamp out of it and it, it probably weighs 50 pounds 60 pounds it's heavy and I don't think it's got any water in it at all the thing is just so hard I don't think it can absorb water and we pick up a lot of different parts and pieces and things of, of uh, vessels that have been sunk and over the years we pick up uh, a lot of bottles that probably haven't seen daylight for a hundred years and uh, a lot of a lot of different things a lot of people just take it home so we never know really how much they get you know so when you when you uh, sometimes talk to them oh yeah I got that I you ought to see what I got well yeah I'd like to see what you got and uh, so we that's how we learn what is around the area. You want to see what I got? Huh? What'd you get? I'll be right back. All right. Here, I'll let you unwrap it. Ah, spearhead. Oh my. That was an arrowhead, must have been Bigfoot. That is a big spearhead. So you can see, if you can see this, this was a spearhead that was dragged up in a drag. Okay? So there's a lot of artifacts probably still on the bottom that we haven't came across yet, but this is very, very unique. To, and they're very hard. Yeah, that hits you with the pole on the end of it. Yeah, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, we don't use these anymore, by the way. <laughs> Got some more questions? I think that's probably it for, for this episode. Okay, to ask your questions, call in 224-58-LEROY, and we will answer your questions for you. There's no question that's a dumb question. Remember that. Thank you.